Let's look at number 1.3. Again, it builds up. So I'm not going to repeat every single thing we've done previously. But what we have in this case is now you'll see we now are going to include an asset on which no allowances were claimed. Okay, so same thing happens here. We've got capital profits of 5 million and there was a capitalization share. So as before, guys, please refer to the previous example if you need to go through the whole story there. But it's the same story here. A million, 4 million of that will be CTC and a million of that will be a reserve subject to dividends tax. The, the rest of that over there also reserves. Then they give us cash and they give us property, plant and equipment, note number two. Now, note number two. The only asset included under property, plant and equipment is a vacant piece of land that the company purchased six years ago at a cost of three million rands. The company does not follow the revaluation model to value property, plant and equipment. That is why that cost of three million is reflected there. Right, and during the liquidation process, the land was sold for seven million rands. The company was placed into liquidation and a shareholder acquired all the shares for 6 million rands. Okay, so first up, what is the amount that will be distributed to shareholders? Now I'm reminding you again, very important, we are now following this process here, which is a calculation actually of what, guys? Retained earnings. Okay, so make sure that you see. It's opening balance plus accounting profits, less our tax liability. So it's going to look like this. Contributed tax capital and reserves slash dividends. Okay, let's just call it that. Okay, so we're going to say opening balance plus accounting profit less tax liability. And that is going to give us the amounts to distribute or closing balance of retained earnings, if you want to call it that. So this is an accounting thing we're doing. Right, so first up is the opening balance. Now guys, I'm going to just do it very quick. It's this capital, uh, capital profits and revenue profits. Okay, I don't want to waste time with that. Capital, cap, prof. Ref prof capital four million rands in CTC and a million rands into reserves capital profits two million and one and a half million. Okay, just up to there. So that's our opening balance. Normal, refer to the previous examples, please, guys, if that seems strange. Now we're doing the accounting profit. Okay, so now, you should all be telling me this. How do we do the accounting profit on this sale? How do we calculate accounting profits on the disposal of an asset? Simple. We say selling price less carry value. Right, that's how we calculate, or book value. That's how we calculate for accounting, right? So, selling price is 7 million. Carry value is the amount in your statement of financial position, 3 million. So our selling price is 7 million, our carry value is 3 million, and that gives us a 4 million rands profit on the disposal of the land. Watch now, that 4 million rands. Go to our reserves, counting profit, sale of land. That profit we just made, 4 million rands, here we go. It's included. Then we have our tax liability. Okay, now, guys, this is where I expect you to score the majority of your marks. And in an exam situation, this is where the majority of your marks will lie. This is a normal tax calculation. We've got a CGT column and a RANDS column, all the usual ones. So what are we doing here? Sale of land. What do we do for tax? We say proceeds. So selling price is no recoupment, 7 million rands. Our base cost is 3 million rands. 
that gives us a 4 million rands capital law, uh, capital gain, sorry. That 4 million rands capital gain goes into my CGT column. Okay, so we add up everything in our CGT column. This is called my aggregate capital gain. Any capital loss brought forward, nothing. Gives me a net capital gain. And I'm doing this just for now the long way around, just to show it's exactly the same. We have an inclusion rate of 80%, and that gives us a taxable capital gain of 3.2 million rands. That 3.2 million rands goes into my rands column. I add up everything else in my rands column. In this case, there's not anything else. 3.2 million rands. That is my taxable income. And then my tax is calculated at 28%. So eight nine six, eight hundred ninety six thousand. Okay, now make sure you see what happens. Our tax liability, eight hundred ninety six thousand. So now we add up everything. Seven six oh four. Okay, I'm going to set it up now so that I can just reuse it for the next example. The dividends tax if share well if the shareholder is a natural person or company. Now remember guys, if it's a natural person, you just multiply the dividends amount by 20%. 1520800. Oh, and as a company, there's no... I'm going to do this just in green here. There's then no dividends tax. Okay, so what I've now done in this question is we've done... One, two, and three. Now let's do number four and five. What is the taxable income of the shareholder? Right, shareholder. Capital gains tax, rands. What did the shareholder receive from the company? In this case, remember it's 100% shareholder. The shareholder received a dividend of 7.604. Million seven six zero oh, four. That full amount will be exempt. The comp the the shareholder then received a return of capital, and remember, it's a deemed disposal per paragraph seventy seven. The proceeds on that is four million the base cost six million and that gives us a capital loss of two million. Okay, then an exempt dividend for paragraph 191A is if it is 100% exempt from income tax and it is 100% exempt from dividends tax.
Okay, so now we are looking at the natural person. So up to this point, for the natural person, the company has been the same. So for the natural person, so if this shareholder we're looking at is now a natural person, was it 100% exempt from income tax? Yes, it was. Was it 100% exempt from dividends tax? No. So thus, the exempt diff equals null rands. Now, if you have a loss there, paragraph 191a, only allow the portion that exceeds the exempt dividend. And how much is the exempt dividend? Null. So how much of that 2 million exceeds the exempt dividend? The full amount exceeds the exempt dividend. So this full amount gets included in our capital gains tax. Okay, now if that natural person or that shell is not a natural person but a company. Okay, so then let's get rid of the unnecessary things. If it is not a company. So first up you ask, is it 100% exempt from income tax? Yes it is, and that will always be the case basically guys. Is it then 100% exempt from dividends tax? The answer is yes, because it's a company. Yes. So the dividend, the exempt dividend is 7604 million. So paragraph 19 says only the amount that exceeds 7604 can exceed, can be allowed. It's 2 million rand, so no amount exceeds it, so no amount gets allowed under my capital gains tax. All right, so that is it for this example, guys. In the next one now, I'm just going to continue and we will fix it up from there.